We have two big AI announcements from some top consulting and advisory firms this week. And these give us a sneak peek into how many major service firms are pivoting to AI. So the first announcement comes from EY, which announced the launch of EY.AI, which is a platform they're building, quote, to help clients boost AI adoption, according to VentureBeat. According to VentureBeat, they say the company said it has invested $1.4 billion as the foundation for this AI platform, including embedding AI into proprietary EY technologies. They have one called EY Fabric, which is used by 60,000 of their clients. And they're also funding a series of cloud and automation technology acquisitions. And the announcement from EY also included the fact that Following an initial pilot with 4,200 EY team members, EY is also going to be releasing a secure large language model called EY.AI EYQ. That's, now, that's not right easy on to the say. <laughs> I just realized that <laughs> saying it out loud. <laughs> so in another announcement, major AI company Anthropic announced a partnership with another big consulting firm, BCG. And this partnership is actually designed to bring Anthropic's Claude model to more enterprises. According to Anthropic, BCG customers around the world will get direct access to our AI assistant to power their strategic AI offerings and deploy, deploy safer, more reliable AI solutions. Now, Anthropic also says that through the collaboration, BCG will advise their customers on strategic applications of AI and then help them deploy anthropic models like Claude 2 to actually deliver business results. So we're seeing a couple of really high profile AI vendor plus consulting firm partnerships here. First off, is it safe to say that we should expect kind of every major consulting firm to build AI into its client facing business? Yeah, I was actually, when I was like getting ready for this one, I was trying to think which ones haven't already made a major announcement, like who's left. Because we had Accenture in June announced a $3 billion investment into their data and AI practice. Um, by the way, uh, Paul Doherty, the leader of AI practice at Accenture, has an amazing book called Human and Machine. So one of our favorites. Uh, it's probably like four or five years old now, but still a great book. So if you're looking for a book recommendation, uh, Human and Machine is an awesome one. Uh, so that was Accenture in June. We had McKinsey announce a partnership with Cohere in July. I know there's been multiple partnerships announced related to OpenAI. So it's just like, yes, like this is kind of where we're going. It's the future of these consulting firms. It's the future of service firms. And I think what we're seeing is every enterprise, the large businesses in particular, they're trying to solve for generative AI, specifically large language models, and they need help. So this becomes a supply and demand thing. It's like, who do you turn to, to help you figure this out? So the strategists, the consultants become the people. And then if you flip it, the large language model companies like Anthropic and Cohere and OpenAI and even like Google and others, they're competing now for the enterprise customers. And the best path to do that is through the trusted advisors, consultants who already have relationships with the brands. So, you know, if you're Cohere or Anthropic and you want to get into these large enterprises, you go through a BCG or a McKinsey or an Accenture because they're the trusted advisors to these enterprises. And if, if you're the recommended large language model for them, then they can wrap services around it. And I think we saw, I don't know, probably like five, 10 episodes ago, we talked about McKinsey's large language model offering and somebody had shared mm -hmm. that online. I mean, they're charging like five to 10 million to like build these custom integrated large language models. So this is a massive opportunity for these service firms. Um, and then what we're seeing not only at the big service firm level, but even down to the smaller you know, marketing agency level or just any you know, service provider or strategic advisor, they're trying to figure out what is the future of their firm. You mm -hmm. know, as, as services are evolving, as the needs are evolving, what can they be offering? And so large language model strategy and implementation certainly seems to be a, a good bet for the near future. So you know, I just think like, the demand is going to keep growing. It, you know, it's at the high, the big enterprise now, but it's going to move down market real fast to the mm -hmm. point where in the next year, you're going to have small, mid-sized businesses trying to figure out what are they going to do with language models. Um, but these big enterprises have a lot of challenges to implement these things. So like Anthropic Cohere, if you're trying to get a language model into a big enterprise, there's privacy concerns, there's security. 
There's the fact that this stuff doesn't work like normal software. So it's somewhat unreliable. We'll talk mm. a little bit about that in, in, in one of the next topics. There's the resistance by workforces who don't want to use this technology. Maybe you're afraid of it. There's the rate of innovation. Uh, like, you know, you can do build this around a GPT-4 and what happens if GPT-5 comes out or what happens if Google's Gemini comes out and it's better than, you know, Chad GPT. So there's this uncertainty around the market. And then there's the, do we go with a closed model like an Anthropic or a Cohere? Or do we go with a open source model like a Llama 2 for Meta? So there's just, this is what these big consulting and advisory firms exist to do is to solve these complex business challenges and help brands navigate through what is going to be a very disruptive technology that's going to get introduced into their companies. Yeah. So that kind of front runs a little bit, some later topics we'll talk about, but it sounds like what you're saying is that, you know, there's not just this whole AI revolution when it comes to oh my gosh, this technology has broken out um, and is really exploding everywhere and it's going to change everything. There's such change management involved too that apparently these enterprises are going to be turning to people like EY or BCG to help with. Is that right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's just, there's so many unknowns ahead. And right now, a lot of the enterprises that we talk to, that we hear from, they're just aware they need to start solving this and they don't really know where it's going to come from. And I think that there is this disconnect where the more technical side, like the CIO, they're working on larger scale solutions for the organization, but like we'll talk with the marketing department and they have no insight into what's going on with the CIO's office or, you know, what's going on at the, the broader implications across the organization. And they're just trying to say like, we just want to start writing posts more efficiently and writing articles and you know, improving what we're creating and doing transcription and summarization and like all these use cases that live within marketing and sales and service, these, you know, dozens or hundreds of obvious use cases, and they don't want to wait around for a year to figure out what to do. And that was, that's what then leads to like, well, let's just go get a third party, you know, software product, like a writer or a Jasper or something like that, where we can just turn this on, you know, two weeks from now and start piloting it in the organization. So that's, you know, I think what we're seeing, but it's definitely going to keep evolving to where a lot of these professional service firms are going to be building, you know, right now there's AI practices, but the reality is it's going to be their whole business in, in the not too distant future. Everything they're going to be consulting on is going to be related to AI strategy and implementation. Are there any lessons here for services firms broadly? I mean, ones that might not be the size of EY or BCG? the same, the same needs are going to exist in every company. So, you know, we have our AI for agency summit coming up in November, and this is one of the, the key things we're going to be talking about is just where is the demand going? So when I was building PR 2020, you know, through the years and you and I were, you know, there together, um, it was all about like, for us, it was all about inbound marketing content, build your blog, drive traffic to the site through that stuff, build a social media presence. Like that was the game plan for 10 years, 10 mm -hmm. plus years. And now the question becomes like, does that game plan even work moving forward? Like what is organic search going to look like? And so I think a lot of agencies have really built over the last 10 to 20 years around digital marketing and, you know, driving traffic to websites and driving leads and converting leads. And, and, and the question just becomes like, what does that look like in the future? And so every service from every agency needs to be thinking about that. And then the, the client side, you need to be thinking about what do you actually need from your agencies moving forward? And everyone's trying to figure this out at the same time. Like no one seems to really have good answers for what's going to happen to search and, um, you know, what are we going to need from agencies? But what we know, what we've heard from a lot of these companies is they need help and they need guidance. And there's just very few agencies and consultants capable of providing that general AI knowledge and strategy. So. I think that we just need more people that are AI literate and, and capable of providing this kind of guidance 